put them over your diagram like this and show them that this is the device. This is where it lies in the circuit. And so this fuse is actually that device. So when you're starting with people who've never seen this before, it gives you a good opportunity to kind of kind of flow, flow through that and show that, hey, this is, the, this, this is the fuse holder that goes here, line one, two, and three. So these are three separate devices here. They're not physically connected together until you make connections downstream. So this is the fuse block. What's the purpose of the fuse? You asked me. Yes. Protection. What kind of protection? Well, sure. Protect what? Sure. Overload. Protect the, the bus are protecting that. The circuit? The wire itself. Yeah. yeah. The, the fuses are there to protect the wires itself, and they only protect you from ground faults and short circuits. They don't provide your overload protection in a motor circuit. Um, so the, the disconnect is, is connected here, but you can take this and put this separate too. This is a three-fold disconnect. Manual, manual off. Um, Question for you. Yes. This is a lock-up one. Yes. Why did, but you could bypass this, because I had a stupid wire directly to Yes, this. you can. Well, but you have no way to lock this out. I know. They do make a module now that goes on this. I don't know if they, on some of the devices, like on the EMS and stuff, they started selling another module that goes on okay. here that you actually can lock out. that was a concern, and I may buy the end lockouts. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's considered just to teach the process of lockout um, for that. But they, a lot of people don't even use this module. They bypass it and okay. go just straight up to the circuit. All right, so the next device here is it, the three le the three legs come in, line one, two, and three come in. They go through your disconnect, through your fuses, and then they turn and they go out to your contactor. Your contactor, the purpose of the contactor is to close contact and send voltage to your motor. So you can take your contactor sitting in here just like this. So you're going to have line one, two, and three come in. Line one, two, and three go out. So that's the contact. A contactor is a magnetic induction device. It uses electrical current. When current flows through or when voltage is applied to the coil, it creates a magnetic field, closes the contacts just like a relay. So those contacts close. The overload device. So this is your overload. In this case, this is electronic overloads. You could have thermal overloads. The difference is, is the way they operate. But they both uh, provide you with overload protection for your motor. This actually protects the motor. So the reason they do that is they separate this in most of your housing and most of your commercial um, circuits. Your breakers and your fuses provide you with your ground fault and short circuit and your overload protection. The reason they separate it in a motor circuit is because your motors pull anywhere from six to ten times the normal current when they start up. So if you put a 20 amp fuse on a 20 amp wire and you turn it on a 20 amp motor, when you turn that motor on it pulls 200 amps. It trips that breaker fuse constantly on startup. So by using this as your overload, this has to have an overload for a specific amount of time to create enough heat or enough current flow to create a magnetic field to cause this to actuate. It doesn't happen instantaneously. It has to be a sustained current above that rate. That instantaneous starting current is very quick. It dissipates very fast once the motor starts running. So the fuses can be sized according up well above 100 150% more than what the rating of the wire is. So you may have a 50 amp fuse on a 20 amp wire, and it's fine because it's only protecting you from ground faults and short circuits. This is what's providing you with your, your low level current uh, protection or your low level motor protection. Have your motor. I'm not going to move it because it's sitting right here. And this is a this is shown as a three-phase motor. This is actually a nine-lead wire connected motor, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. How to troubleshoot that or how to wire that. But um, those that is this is called your line circuit. Everything above this is called the line circuit or power circuit. Everything below this is called the control circuit. And purpose of the control circuit is to cause the blind power circuit to apply power to the motor. So the control circuit does nothing but control the power circuit. The control circuit could be any voltage. You can see it as 200, 480 volt control circuits. You can see 277, 240, 120, 24 volt. I mean, there's a wide variety of voltage there. The voltage of the control circuit does not matter. It still provides the same thing. I can still turn on that 480 volt motor with a 24 volt control. It's not a problem. So the transformer here, which is this device, and you can set this in. The transformer sits right here. 
and it separates the two systems. So basically your control circuit is a separately derived system off of your primary. So you get that, it steps that voltage down to 120. In the case of this trainer, we've got a 208-120 supply. It's a three-phase, five-wire, 208-120. You really don't need the transformer in there to run the control circuit on 120. But it adds that flexibility there to teach them the process of using a transformer, even though you don't need one. Um, so you can take that transformer, put in there, run 208 to it, and get 120 out. The power comes out of the transformer, and it goes to both ends of the control circuit. And in this case, we have an e-stop. Like I said, it just always helped my students to take the parts over and actually put it on the prints and so it's exactly where it's sitting at uh, in, the, in the schematic because the more they can relate this to this, the better off they're going to be when they get in the field. So this is a mechanical latching switch, push to reset or twist to reset. Uh, it is maintained contact, um, open and close. So this is there to protect you in the event something happens. And the reason that this is designed the way it is with a mushroom head or where it's fully accessible as opposed to using this as a stop button is if something happens, you may not be able to press this, which most of your stop buttons are now. Do you extended. call that a cycle stop? Is that how you teach yes, it? Yes, yes. This is not considered an e-stop. This is just a stop. Cycle and, stop. Right. and most of your new buttons now have the stop button extended. You don't see the red buttons recessed like the green buttons are anymore because people used to use these as e-stops not that they're supposed to, but they right. did. And people would come up, and if you have a situation where somebody cuts their arm off, they can't push that button because it won't fit in the hole. So, so now they make it, but that's what this is for. You should be able to hit it with your head, your elbow, your, your, whatever you got, you can hit that button and stop it. Um, that's the purpose of that. Question for you. Can you explain all these? Well, you got three different ways to connect to it. Yes, this Two. is 24 volts. This is, they're all connected. So this is connected to that, it's connected to that. Okay. This so you can connect so it up manually? So you can wire a wire to it, and that applies power to this. You, this is your 120-volt control circuits. So this is for your high voltage. This is for your 24 volts if you use this on a PLC. Yeah. And what's this one? And this one's just wired either one. Okay. You, you can wire 120 volts with 240. Okay. This That's is not voltage-dependent. It doesn't matter. It'll run whatever okay. you know. It'll pass through whatever voltage you apply to okay. it. This is just a different connecting mechanism. Anytime you see these, this is for the 120, yep. 277. Anytime you see these smaller ones, this is for 24 volts DC. And then if you use the terminal, you just run it straight in. Oh, you know that by the banana plug size. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. What that's for is to keep people from connecting 120 volts to the PLC or to the low voltage device. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. To <laughs> prevent them from. Yeah. I didn't know whether you had wire on there. And no. You had the wire on connection and the 24 volt as yep. well. That allows you to use it for both. So they use that same stop button on several different trainers. So this, um, this, they use this on their process control station. So when they do it, they use they use a wired in, wired in. or one similar to that. Okay. And a lot of their term, their stuff has those terminals on it now, um, like this one right here. Yeah, you can wire, you can plug it in here, or you can actually physically wire the wires to it. There, you small. small well, I understood what that was. It was the one twenty twenty four. Yeah. I didn't know what your intent was. Yep. That's what it's for. All right. So the stop buttons. Push button controls you on this one. You've got two stop or two push buttons. You've got a momentary contact, both of them. You have one that's red and one that's green. And I emphasize one's red and one's green. There, there's no difference between the physical operation of these two devices. They both have normally open, normally closed contacts. So here, and when you, when you if you measure from here to here, it will be open. When you push this, it would close. If you measure from here to here, it's closed. When you push this, it's open. And by the same thing down here. This, the color of the button just indicates its function in industry generally. Red means stop. Okay. Uh, and as we've said, every one of these devices have fault switches on the bottom. So if you wanted to open one of these switches, you can figure out what fault. Put that fault on there and it'll open or short out. Of Does the instructor's the manual tell you what those? There, there, is a, okay. there is a list in the, one of the books. I'm not sure which one. We'll, we'll and then you put it. a resistor in there so if you're shorting it, you're not burning anything out. Oh, uh, actually, well, one of them is shorted completely. Yeah. So what, it shorts one of them out completely. Ah, the other one, one of them is just adds resistance to it so ah. that it won't have the holding current to be gotcha. able to keep the motor starters energized. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then one of them is open. And then I don't know what the other one is, so you just have to look at it and see. Sure, so we that's can awesome. We can measure them in a little bit and see. But these devices go here. So this would be your stop button. This would be your start button. So those are the devices that connect there. Great. Okay. The, we 
y'all were talking about the contact. The button on the contact here that was up here. This is labeled M1. Well, everything in a schematic that's labeled M1 goes on that physical device. So it means it's mounted physically in that arena. So M1 here, M1 here, M1 here. These three contacts are inside of this, one, two, three. These two contacts are auxiliary contacts. They are located on here too, normally open right here, NO, this is number 13 and 14. So 13 and 14 are those two contacts. And then your coil here, M1 coil, is A1 and A2. So those devices are all on the same physical device. Gotcha. Did not label this, I should have. This should have had OL out this top of it. But this OL and that OL is the same, just like I said. Everything that's labeled the same is, is indicated there. So if you look at this overload device, we have a normally open and a normally closed contact on here. We use this as an auxiliary contact in the control circuit. That way, if this device up here senses an excessive current in either one of these three legs, it opens the circuit here. It causes this contact to open, and that kills your circuit. So it's overload protection for your circuit. So that's all the devices that are there. Um, and now we can connect this circuit up if you want to, to start off with. And then we can kind of work from there and start adding components or doing some different things. So if you want to. I've already done this one, guys. Are you going to jump in?